Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Look what I've got. I've got a CZ75 SPL1 Phantom. Yeah, a long name, long, CZ tends to do that. Their names be a little bit convoluted. This is basically a SPL1 tactical with a polymer frame. Overall, it's basically the same gun. And it's based on the CZ75, so there's interchangeability with CZ75 magazines, and it functions just like a CZ75. So let's take this thing and talk about it a little bit, show you some of the features, starting with the empty chamber feature. So at this point, what you've got is a full-size service weapon style gun. It's up in the territory of like a Beretta 92, the uh, P226, or the Glock 34, the actual Glock competition gun. It's even bigger than a Glock 17. And speaking of competition, these are favored by the competition crowd for a number of different reasons. One, their reliability, but two, this very low bore axis. You'll see how short the slide is. It's only, it's, it's actually lower than the thickness of my finger. And that's because the slide guides are actually, the rails and guides are set up to inset into the slide. So the side, slide sits down in instead of on top like a Glock or most of the others. It is a DASA. The trigger is about 10 pounds in double action mode and about five pounds in single action mode. And unfortunately, the Omega trigger is not available yet for this series, but it's still a very nice trigger. It does have a decocker. You'll see right now it's cocked because I, I had cycled it to show it's clear. The decocker actually works quite well and safely lowers the hammer. And you'll see it's kind of like in a half cock. It's offset a little bit position. So that's part of the safety. It also does have a firing pin block. This is safe to carry hammer down on a loaded chamber but it is not intended to be carried cocked and locked because there is no locked. So if you wanted to carry this with a round in the chamber, you would want to use the decocker to put it in this hammer down situation, and then it's perfectly safe to carry. It does have a rail, and unlike a lot of the polymer guns, it's got five slots. It's got lots of slots. So you're not gonna have any problem putting whatever it is that you want to hang off that rail, light, laser, or anything else, get it close to the trigger, far away from the trigger, you're not going to have any trouble with it at all. And if you'll notice, the trigger guard is actually fairly large. So gloves or other things are going to fit quite well in there. So let me show you the trigger. It has a nicely curved metal trigger. So you get your finger on it and it sits right in there. There is a reasonable amount of take up. It's very smooth. Now at this point I'm in double action mode. So it's a very heavy trigger. 10 plus pounds trigger. Breaks all the way at the back. And then smoothly would come back out again. So if I'm going to do a double action again, this time I'll, I'll cycle it. So there's the double action. If I were to cycle the gun, the reset's right about there. It's got a reasonably good reset. It's not the shortest reset on any you know, trigger I've got, but it's a very nice reset. And then just a little bit of take up, almost imperceptible, you're back on the wall. And at this point, you've got a very short, very crisp and smooth, right around a five pound break. So it's a very repeatable trigger, and that's another reason why you'll see the CZ75 favored with the competition crowd. Of course, you can do things to lighten up the trigger and improve it, but it's a very consistent trigger. It's a very smooth trigger. It's real easy with the low bore access and the nice trigger to keep this on target. And when the difference between the A ring and the B ring can make the difference between you know, first place and 10th place, that kind of gets a little bit important. On the polymer versions, it does come with two interchangeable back straps, so you can customize it to fit your palm, and it does have a lanyard loop. It's got nice serrations at the front and nice serrations at the back, so it's easy to hold on to, and just kind of this sandpaperish but smooth pattern. So when you've got a hold of the gun, it doesn't tear your hand up, it doesn't chew you up at all, but it doesn't slide around. Even when you get sweaty, it stays right where you put it which is, you know, it's a well-designed gun and meant to be able to be used, held, and, and operated smoothly. You can reverse the magazine catch, but there are no ambidextrous features on the gun. Of course, there's not a whole lot of controls. You know, you've got the magazine catch, the slide stop, and the decocker. One other thing I want to point out is it has a significant beaver tail that really comes out and covers your hand. With the slide being as low as it is and as short as it is in this beaver tail, it's nearly impossible to get hammer bit or slide bit. So it's a very comfortable gun to fire for anybody who might be working with it. So I'm going to put the magazine in it. It does come with these steel 18 round magazines. came with two of them, plus one in the pipe gives you a total capacity of nine. 
shows you how big the gun or sorry 19 shows you how big the gun is it's 8.15 inches long front to back it's 5.79 inches tall with this magazine in it and it's kind of a fat little thing 1.46 inches wide this isn't a concealed carry gun yeah you can conceal it um, people conceal full-size 1911s but that's not what this is for it's a range gun it's a competition gun it's a nightstand gun and in that realm the size, the, the weight, it only comes in at 29.4 ounces, which is about 33% less than the, you know, the standard metal version of this, which is an aluminum alloy. So it's a, it's a light gun and really easy to control. The sights on this I'm a little less impressed with. They are billed as night sights, but what they are is photoluminescent. They glow green, but they really don't glow all that much, and it does take a significant amount of light to charge them up, and they don't glow for very long. When they're not charged or when they're in a low light environment, they're kind of grayish and they're small. So I did have a bit of a hard time seeing the sights. They appear to be high quality, but I did have a little hard time seeing the sights. So most likely what I'm going to end up doing is changing out the sights with these TFX uh, fiber optics. And these are tritium fiber optics, so they're a night and day sight. And if you've ever worked with these true glow slide sights, they're real bright. doesn't matter what the conditions are, they're real easy to see. So I'm probably going to swap them out. That's not going to be the most difficult thing to do. The rear is dovetailed with a set screw to lock it in place. And the front slides out forward, which is a little unique. And there's a roll pin. Now, roll pins tend to immediately make people grimace. A roll pin on a sight's not bad because you don't have to touch it other than changing the sight. Once you put the roll pin back in, it'll probably stay there for eternity. You'll see that the way the ejection port is kind of a long oblong ejection port and recessed at the back to ensure reliable ejection and one thing I'll say about this gun from a reliability standpoint it just worked I know the CZ's tend to be optimized for 124 grain we were feeding it 115 grain and it just worked it was accurate it was reliable it stabilized the rounds it did everything it was supposed to do from the first round we put in it till we were tired of it and went home so I have nothing to say negative about the function and reliability of this gun. The design is really, it's an interesting design. It's not a really modern looking design, but it's super effective and it just works. These have an MSRP of around $680. Of course, you can find them far less than that. We got this one actually pretty cheap from a gun store that was liquidating their inventory to remodel. So you, know, you can find these. They're not super common. They didn't make a whole lot of these, but they are current production. I think they discontinued them. They used to make them, discontinued them, and brought them back. So if you find one, you probably will be able to find it at a reasonable price, but you're not going to typically find these bargain basement. Disassembly and maintenance is fairly easy. Of course, you pull the magazine out. There are two notches. There's a notch right there on the slide, and there's a dot on the frame. And all you do is pull it back to line these up. And then on the other side, right here, I'm just going to release it. You have this pin. You have to push this through. So it's kind of a two-handed operation, but it's not difficult. You can usually push the, uh, once you get it lined up properly, you can usually push this through fairly easily. I just pushed it down with my thumb, grab a hold of it, and pull it out. Now one important note, the hammer does have to be down or the slide won't come off. So if you cocked the hammer to make it easier to pull this back, then you'll have to kind of hold it in position and line it up to be able to pull the trigger to fully release it. There's the slide, and here's where I was talking. The guides in the slide face out, as opposed to your typical Glock where they'd be on the inside. And the slide guides are actually inside, right here. So instead of sticking up out of the frame, you know, pointing out, they're recessed down into the frame pointing in. And that puts the slide significantly lower in the chassis and gives you that you know, real low bore access, which again, might not be a big deal for range time with a nine millimeter, there's not significant recoil, but in the competition realm, that little bit of advantage can make a big difference. Everything in here is well machined. You know, there's a little more going on because you got the DASA functionality back here in the fire control group, and you can see the slide guides here, and they're, they're fairly long and they're steel. There is a little bit of a polymer guide here just to make it easier to put it back together but these steel ones are the ones that take all the business of it. In the slide itself, it's well machined and smooth. There's your firing pin block. So again, this is a drop safe weapon. 
I'll go ahead and take the recoil spring out. And the recoil spring is not captive, but with this hood, it's usually fairly easy to get back in there. One thing I will note is it doesn't have a tendency to self-center as well as some. So when you put it back in there, you kind of make it centered. If you don't, you go to put the slide back on, it'll hang up and you have to pull it back off. It won't jam and make it where you can't get it together. You'll just have to take it off and reset it. Here's the barrel. And it's, it's kind of more like a 1911-ish style setup as far as the locking mechanism. Integrated ramp. And it's a little bit steep, but it's very smooth. So it, we had no trouble getting this thing to feed reliably. And let me put my little light in here so you can see down into the barrel. You'll see it is conventional rifling, which if you're, you know, you're doing competitions and you're doing your own loading, you'll be able to you know, load hard cast if you want to without having to worry about lead following. And overall, typical CZ, it's well machined, it's smooth, there's nothing fancy on it, no, no decorations on it but it's just well put together and well done. And the same holds true with the slide. Everything in here is just cleanly machined. There's no burrs or any other machining issues. So you know, what you've got is a well-manufactured gun, and these things are known to last for just as forever. They just last, they just work. Uh, a buddy of mine has a CZ-75 that he's got hundreds, hundreds of thousands of rounds through because he does competition, and it just works. He cleans it periodically, probably not as often as he should, but they're just a reliable gun. So let's put this critter back together. First part's relatively easy, drop, drop the barrel into place, take that recoil spring, the guide rod, line it up, and you'll see it does, it does slide right in, but you'll see I had to center it. It didn't center itself, but it slid right in. This guide kind of keeps the spring from wiggling around and it just pushes right in. Now I've got it assembled, it is centered, I should be able to take the frame and line it up. And you got to line it all the way up at the front. I'll bring it back. Now what I need to do is if you look through this hole, I get my fingers out of the way and get some light, you line it up so that the barrel lug is not obstructing the hole. Put the pin in, enough to capture it, and then you pull it back till these line up, and that opens up the notch in the slide and then click it in place and let go and you're back operational real easy to maintain 1911 ish and some of its characteristics you just don't have the barrel bushing to mess with but overall it's an easy to maintain gun especially given that it's you know it's an older design despite the polymer this is really still based on an older design now I mentioned this was a service weapon style gun the types of guns you might compare it to is something like this Beretta and you'll see the bread is a little bit longer because its barrel sticks out when you line them up beaver to tail to beaver tail. But overall, that's the size category you're in. And then, of course, something like this Sig P226 also. And operationally, they work similar, you know, the DS DASA characteristics and the decocker. And funny enough, you tend to see way more of these in the competition circuit than the SIGs or the Berettas, even though from a functional standpoint, they function just as well. And if I set them up on their end, you know, there's the Beretta's a little bit shorter. SIG and the CZ are about the same height, but you know, functionally they're very similar to each other. Of course, when you put the magazine into the uh, CZ, then you've got a, uh, you know, it sticks out a little bit more. You've got this base plate. It's the base plate sticks down, but it's not a capacity extending base plate. It's just a, you know, it's an extended base plate, but it doesn't alter the capacity. So overall, if you're looking for a competition gun, if you're looking for a full-size range gun, nightstand gun, you know, 19 rounds, that'd take care of whatever business needs to be taken care of in the middle of the night, this is a really good choice. They're fun to shoot, they're easy to shoot, reliable, and really just all around a good choice. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, don't forget to click that bell if you subscribe, and check us out on Facebook and Patreon. Thank you.